Hey everyone and welcome to another hard time for mining lesson from the iron workshop. I certainly missed saying this line. In this lesson we'll be learning about variables. So let's roll the intro and get to it. All right, so before we start doing any kind of code in the game, we'll need to talk about what variables are, when do we use them, why should we use them, and so on. So I will go briefly over the contents of this video. So first of all, we'll talk about the basics of variables, what they are. Um, I do realize that variables can be a bit of a scary concept for people who are new to using variables. And they can be a bit confusing at start. And you might actually want to avoid them because of how weird this thing is when you work for it for the first time. But trust me that when you actually give it a go and you play around with it a bit, you realize how powerful vari variables are. So it's very recommended that you get this properly because it will totally transform the way that you do modding in Hearts Iron 4. Next, we'll talk when to use variables. So various situations in which you might want to use variables. These are only examples. Obviously, there is a ton of other situations that I did not think about where you can use variables. But this is just to give you a direction maybe when to start using them. Next, we'll talk about basic variable commands, uh, what these commands do and how to use them in the game. In number four, we'll talk about how to test variables. And at this point, we'll go in game and we'll actually start using variables and see how they're used in the game. And uh, the last bit will be extra syntax where I will give you some more ways of using variables and uh, expand on them if you like. Uh, you don't actually have to watch this section. It's only if you want to expand your knowledge after you got the basics. All right, let's get to it. So let's talk about the basics of variables. First of all, uh, you should realize that almost all Paradox games use variables, certainly the most recent games. So the cool thing about it is that if you understand how variables work in Hearts Iron 4, you will definitely be able to take this knowledge and apply it in other games as well. So what are variables? Variables are used to store various game information. In Hearts Iron 4, variables can only store numbers. You can't store strings or any text in variables. A limitation that is actually quite annoying and would help modders a lot, but so far Paradox have not given us uh, this option, at least in Hearts Iron 4. Uh, maybe in other games like CK3, that's actually possible, but I haven't really tested that. Next, a variable that was created, but not assigned, its value is zero by default. So when you create a variable and if you don't give it any value, it will be zero. And it's quite important that you remember that because sometimes you forget to assign a value and you're expecting something to happen with a value that's supposed to be there, but there isn't, so it's zero. And that obviously affects how things work out. So that is something that you need to keep in mind. Next, variables that do not exist can cause errors, so make sure that a variable exists before you attempt to access it. If you're trying to access a variable that does not exist, the game will give you a lot of errors. And that can be very annoying, especially when you encounter it for the first time. That little uh, error dog in the bottom right corner of the screen will start counting thousands of errors because it's trying to access a variable that doesn't exist. So if you see that happening, that is the most likely cause. Next, just like country flags, variables are invisible when not displayed with localization. So that means that they're this sort of like theoretical thing that exists in the game. Uh, but obviously it's not theoretical, it actually does something and it's there. But you can't really see it like uh, decisions or events, right? So you need to change your perception of how you actually use them since they're not that straightforward. Testing needs to be done with dedicated decisions or console commands and we will definitely talk about that 
if you want to start using variables, you will need to create your own decisions that allow you to test them and see what happens when you use them. And one last thing, temporary variables are very useful to reduce impact on performance, but any values stored in them will be removed once the code of block, the block, the block of code is executed. And uh, this is something that I will talk about more in the extra syntax section of this video. But you also have an ability in the game to create temporary variables that will be deleted once you're done using them, which can be, which can be quite useful and you don't need to manually remove them uh, once you create them. Now it's quite important to note uh, at this point that the whole game actually runs on variables. It's just variables that you don't really get to see. And variables are very important, are very important in that regard. And when you encounter performance issues in large mods, a lot of it has to do with variables. Not all of it. I'm not going to claim to know what causes lag in every mod for Hotron 4, but in the big ones that use variables, a lot of it has to do with variables that are still stored in the game and the game tries to access them. Uh, so it's best to get rid of variables you are not using. All right, let's continue and see when we can use variables and in what situations. So when are you expected to use variables? The most common use for variables is when you need to work with unknown values or a value that needs to be created in the game. For example, if I wanted to give the Soviet Union 200 infantry equipment, I can just use the effect that does that. But if I want to give them a random amount of infantry equipment, I will need to use a variable. Another example that I did not mention here is that, for example, I want to give one country a certain amount of weapons that exists in another country. And this is something that we'll take a look when we go into the game. I can give one country the infantry equipment the amount of infantry equipment that, for example, Germany has. Now, unfortunately, there is no built-in effect for that. The only effect that you have requires you to specify the exact number of weapons you want to give. But what if you don't know how many weapons Germany has at the time when you're executing that effect? Well, in those cases, you can use variables and they are a real lifesaver. Another common use is to create uh, visible countdowns when country flags are not enough. So another very common use for variables and one that I have been using quite extensively in my Cold War mod is the ability to create countdowns where variables are being counted down and you can display it as a countdown for the player for certain actions for him to do before the countdown expires. So very useful in that regard. Now, I do want to mention that in order to do these countdowns, you will also need to use on actions that are counting down or subtracting from the variable that you created. Now, if you don't know what on actions are or how to use them, I will have a link to that in the upper corner of the screen. Uh, so it's definitely recommended that you learn how to use on actions and combine these two for some very powerful results. All right, uh, another thing, variables can be used in focuses, decisions, and event effects, as well as conditions. Now, some variable conditions can also be used, but for the effects, you just do it like any other effect, and we're definitely going to go into the game and see that very soon. Now, please make sure that before we go into the game, that your game is running in debug mode. If you don't know how to run debug mode, I also have a separate video for that, so please make sure to check that before we continue. All right, now let's take a look at some of the variable effects that we have and how we can use them. Okay, so we'll be going into the game very soon, but I just want to talk about this stuff a little bit more before we actually start writing some code. So these are the basic commands that you can use for variables. You can find the full list of commands that you can use with variables in the Hardware 4 wiki. I will also have a link to that in the description of this video. So make sure to check that out. Because uh, again, the, the goal of these videos is to give you the basics. I really can't go into every possible thing. 
So uh, if you really want to explore and learn about this concept uh, further, then it's very recommended that you check the hardware for Wiki. So let's go over these commands and see what they do. So the first command, which we'll be using quite often, is set variable. And what this command does, what it tells the game to do, it creates a variable and sets its value to the given value. So all I need to do is to type set variable and then give it a name. I'll need to give a name to that variable so that I can access it again. And then I also need to tell the game what's the value of that variable. And as I said, we'll see how it's actually happening in game in a few minutes. Now, please note that if you use this command again on the same variable, the value of that variable will be reset. So let's say, for example, I have a variable called um, Soviet power, whatever. And I set that variable to 20. OK, and if later I'm using the command again, set variable Soviet power and I assign it 50, then it will be now worth 50. That will be the value of that variable. Next, we have add to variable. So this one, instead of setting the, the value of the variable, instead of saying, OK, Soviet power is now instead of 20, it's 50, it adds the value to that variable. So let's say that if I use add to variable and Soviet power is 20 and I use an add to variable command and I put, let's say, 40 into that, then now Soviet power is 60. OK, it's not 40. It's not set variable. It added to it. Now, I might be over explaining here, but I just really want to make sure you understand this. Next, we have subtract from variable. So very simple. Instead of adding, it subtracts. Again, it doesn't set the value of the variable. It just removes the number that you gave it from the value as is. OK. Next, we have multiply. So we can multiply our variable by a certain number and it will multiply it. <laughs> yeah. Another useful command is clear variable. So what this does, it clears the variable completely, deleting it from the game, which means that this variable will no longer exist and you will not be able to access it, which is very useful to reduce the stress that you put on the game if you are using too many variables. Another command is round variable. So obviously, if we are multiplying and subtracting variables, then sometimes the number may not be an even number, like a full number, right? Like, I don't know, 10. It might be 10 point something. So if I want to round that number into something, into a whole number, then I can use round variable on my variable. Another command that I forgot to put here is divide variable. So instead of multiplying, we'll just divide the value, the variable that we have by the number that we are giving to this command. Now, uh, one trigger that you have for variables in case you want to check what's the value of a variable. And this is something that you will put in your triggers, not in your commands, right? So for example, if you have a focus, you can put that in the available section. You will not be putting it in the reward section. So with this command, we can actually check what's the value of the variable. And that can be quite useful in case you want to do something if the value is too low or the value is too high, whatever. Uh, that allows you to check the value of the variable. Let's now go into the game and start playing around with this stuff and see how it works and what we can actually do with it. Now, please make sure that your game is in debug mode before you proceed. Let's go. All right, so let's start using these variables and see what we can do with them. Now, for the purpose of this lesson, I have created some decisions to test these variables. Now, if you don't know how to create decisions, then maybe this lesson is a bit too complex for you at this point. So it's best that you first take a look at my video describing or showing how to create decisions and then come back to this. But uh, I already have some decisions here that allow me to play around with these variables. I highly recommend you to create these as well to play around with this stuff and just make sure that you understand it. So let's see how we first create a variable. 
Now, I also have these, these decisions open here in Notepad. And what I'm going to do is that, that I'm going to put these commands in here in complete effect in order to execute what I want to do. And this is just an example. As I said before, you can use variables in events and in focuses as well. This is only to show you how this stuff works. So I got my first decision here, add to variable. I'm going to be using that. And what I'm going to type here is I'm going to type our first command, which is set variable, right? So let's just go ahead and type that set variable. And uh, the next thing that I'm going to do here, I'm going to open a new bracket. Now, the reason that I open a new bracket is because, first of all, as I said before, I need to assign a name to this variable so that I can come back to it and let the game know that I want to do something with this variable. So let's just use the example from before. We'll call it Soviet power, right? Okay. And now I need to tell the game what's the value of this variable. So let's assign it to like 50. So the variable Soviet power now has the value of 50. Great. So in order to create this variable, I will need to execute this decision, add to variable. And now the variable exists in the game and its value is 50. Now, obviously this is not something that you can see in any plain way, okay? But there is a way for you to actually uh, make sure that first of all, the, val the variable exists and that it has its value. And we'll be using the console for that. And that is why we needed debug mode. So I'll open the console by pressing the tilde key on my keyboard. And in the console, you can type the following command, get underscore var, short for variable, obviously. And uh, we need Soviet power, right? So let's type uh, space, yeah, uh, Soviet power. All right, and you see that it says Wittenberg 50. Now, ignore the this thing, um, because the game has numbers for states, it will give you the name of a state uh, that has the same number. It doesn't really matter. It, does, it doesn't mean that the variable was set on this state. It's completely meaningless. You can ignore it. What you really need to know is that, first of all, the value exists because the game has returned something and it tells you that it's 50. Let's say, for example, if I do something like this, get var and we'll call it French power. You'll see that the game says zero. Okay, this value either doesn't exist or it doesn't have, sorry, this variable either doesn't exist or it doesn't have value. Okay, so now we have a variable called Soviet power and has the value of 50. So what can I do with it? Well, let's first of all make something quite simple. I want to create a, a decision that gives the Soviet Union political power that is worth the amount of the variable Soviet power. So let's see how I can do that. I'm going to open my decisions again. And right here in the second decision, I'm going to type the following. First of all, I'm going to type the command for adding political power. So it's add political power equals. Now, if you use this command before, you know that this is the point where you need to assign a specific value, but I don't want to give it a value. I want it to use the variable. So in order for it to use the variable, I'm going to type the following var short for variable colon, and now the name of the variable. So it's Soviet power. And of course, I wanted to give it to the Soviets. So I'm going to type here Soviet, I'm going to open a bracket, go to the end of the line, close it, and let's save it. And now let's see what happens in the decisions panel. So if I were to hover my mouse over here, you see that the Soviet Union gets political power of zero. Okay, why is it zero? That's, uh, that's a bit strange, right? Well, I'll tell you why this happens. When I clicked this decision here, and I've created the variable Soviet power and assigned it the value of 50, I did that on the default scope. 
So what is the default scope in this situation? It's Germany. So Germany has this variable with that value. But in here, when I'm targeting the Soviet Union scope, the game doesn't really know. I mean, it's looking for that variable in the Soviet Union. It doesn't know that I'm meaning Germany. So in order to correct this, what I need to do is to go back here. And in here, right before the name of the variable, I will need to type Germany, the tag name for Germany, dot Soviet power. Now what this tells the game is the following. Give the Soviet Union political power, which is the variable that Germany has called Soviet power, right? So now the game should understand that I'm referring to a variable. Okay, let's just try it like this at political power. We will see that when I go back into the game, it recognizes properly that it's 50 because we're in the same scope. We haven't really skipped from one country to another. But in this case, we want to do it like this. So we will add the Germany tag in here and I'm going to save it. And now if I were to hover over this decision, you see that we properly get our political power. Of course, if I were to change this to French power, you see that I get nothing, okay? So this is a very useful way for you to save information and then use it a bit later in order to do something else with it. And now let's look at another example. So my value is currently worth, uh, sorry, the value of the variable Soviet power is 50. But let's say that just before I give it to the Soviets, I want to change it a bit. So let's go ahead and we'll do the following with it. We'll add to that variable, first of all, okay? So I'm going to add, type the command, add to variable. Now again, since I'm in the same scope, then the game should know that I'm accessing Soviet power in Germany, okay? If I were using it in a different country, then I would need to type the tag of that country. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll do it like this. Add to variable Soviet power. And I want to add another 25 to it. Of course, we'll need to change it in here back to Soviet power. And if I were to hover over my decision now, you see that it still says that I'm going to get 50 political power. But that is because this command has not been executed yet, right? So the game doesn't know that the variable has had an additional 25 po points added to it. But if I were to execute it, you'll see that it works. So let's go ahead and click this once. I'm going to re-enable this decision. And now you see that we get 75 because the add to variable command was executed and now it works properly. Excellent. So we can do the same thing with subtracting, with multiplying, with rounding and with dividing variables, right? Um, I'm not going to show you all of these since I think it's quite clear by this point. Just make sure that your syntax is correct, that you're typing everything properly, that your brackets are closed and everything should work fine for you. Okay, now let's see what happens when I use clear variable. So let's go ahead and clear this variable. Okay, I'm just going to use this decision again. I'll just type clear variable. Now in this example, I actually don't need to open any brackets because we do not have another equal sign. In most cases, you will open brackets whenever there is a chance that you will have two equal signs and in order not to confuse the game, that is why we have the brackets. So in here we don't have that, so I can just write it straight like this, clear variable, what's the name of the variable that I need to, to clear? Uh, so let's go ahead and execute that. And if I were to check the variable again, you will see that now it's worth zero because it has been deleted from the game, okay? So quite useful. Now let's take a look at another example. We're going to do something quite similar, but I just want to take it. I just want to take a look at a bit of a more complex example. So we have another command in the game that's called send equipment. Now I'm just going to paste the entire command in here, like this. 
And this is what it looks like. So it sends uh, an equipment. This is the equipment that it sends. And this is the amount. So what I can do with this is that I can tell the game to send a certain amount of equipment that exists in another country. Let's say that I want to send infantry equipment in the amount that Germany currently has. So how am I going to do that? Let me just zoom in in here a little bit. So we'll need to change this command in the following way. I'm going to keep the equipment in the amount. I'm going to type var and in here number of equipment. So this is the number of equipment and the type of equipment. Now this will obviously target the Germany scope. So let's go ahead and see how it works. I'm going to save this decision and the target here is the Soviet Union. So let's see what happens when I hover over this decision. So it will send 53 of infantry equipment to Soviet Union. Okay, why 53? Well, if I were to look at my logistics, you see that currently Germany has 53 infantry equipment, right? So there was no other way for me to know that, but because I used variables, the game knows that. Now I can even manipulate this a little bit further. For example, I can actually tell the game that I want to check the amount of equipment that a different country has. Let's say, for example, the United States. So I will just put USA in here, dot, save it. So you now see that it sends zero of infantry equipment to Soviet Union. And that is probably because the United States actually doesn't have any in its stockpile. Let's go ahead and make sure of that. So I'm going to tag switch to the United States. And if we take a look at logistics, okay, we see that the United States actually doesn't have any infantry equipment in stock. Excellent. So you see how we can create these really dynamic things with variables where I don't need to um, know the value beforehand before I execute the command. Now, a lot of commands actually accept variables as values, and that is a very cool way to use them. Okay, so we'll take a look at one more example on how you can use variables. And this one concerns civil wars. So let's say that I want to start a civil war in another country but I want the size of the civil war to depend on the size of a certain political party, how much popularity that political party has. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the start civil war code. I'm just going to paste it in here. And the usual code actually looks something like this. Okay, so let's say something like this. So it says start civil war, Ideology, it can be, oh, I don't know, democratic, for example, democratic. And uh, this is the size. So let's go ahead and test this on a small country first, like, um, I don't know, like Yugoslavia. Okay. So if I were to do this, then a civil war will start in Yugoslavia with the democratic ideology. And the size will be 0.10. So that means that about 10%, if I were to put this at 0.50, that means that about 50% of the country will be split uh, between the country that started the civil war and the original country, okay? But with variables, I can actually tell the game to check the popularity of a party and determine the size of the civil war with that. So let's see how I can do that. We see that their, that their Democratic Party has around 15% popularity. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to change the size and I'm going to tell it to use a variable like this. So the size is going to be a variable party popularity at Democratic. Okay, just like this. Now, if you're wondering where do I know all of these commands from, again, these can be found on the Hardware 4 wiki, and I will have a link to that in the description. Go ahead and start experimenting and playing around with all of this stuff. It can be quite fascinating. Okay, so now the, the size of the civil war will be determined by the popularity of the democratic country in Yugoslavia. So let's go ahead and save that and just trigger this decision, see what happens. 
Okay, so yeah, that seems about right. They got around 15% of the country just along the coast here. And that is how we can use variables to actually trigger more dynamic and more realistic civil wars instead of giving it like a value that may actually not have anything to do with how things are in reality in the current state of the game. Now, of course, another way that we can do this is that I can put this dependency on the party popularity of a different country, which is even more bizarre. Uh, let's go ahead and do this for Canada, right? So I want the size of the, let's call it the communist, communist, or I should, I think it's communism, that's the right one. Um, I can actually determine the size of the civil war by the party, po by the popularity of the communist party in the Soviet Union, which is obviously going to have a really weird result, but let's go ahead and see how it looks. So let's do it like this and we now see that yeah they got a big chunk of the of Canada because they are very popular because they have very high popularity in the Soviet Union right so quite crazy things that you can do with these variables but before we finish I do want to show you how you can check existing variables that already exist in the game with the console so I can type get underscore var and I can actually go ahead and copy this thing, right? So let's go ahead and check it for France. And it will show you just how much popularity uh, the communists have in France. So quite a lot of ways for you to check and to work with this stuff. So that is it for variables. Now, obviously, as with most topics in modding, you can actually go deeper and do more stuff than what I've shown here. But again, I'm just trying to show you the basics. And from here, you can take it to crazy places whenever you want to, or whatever you want to do with them. So good luck uh, on your work with variables. I hope stuff works out for you. Again, if it doesn't, please let me know in the comments and we'll try to figure stuff out. Now, I will be talking about some additional stuff in the extra syntax section of this video. So stay tuned if you want to learn a little bit more about variables there. For anyone else, thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next video lesson or tutorial on the Iron Workshop. Bye bye. Hi and welcome to the extra syntax section of this video. In this section, we'll be learning a bit more about variables and how to use them. So the first thing that I want to talk about is how you can actually display variables with localization, right? So oftentimes when you've created a variable and you're doing something with it, you want the player to see what's the value of that variable. Makes sense. So how can we display the value of a variable? So in order to do that, first of all, we'll need to create a localization file. So I have already created a file here called test localization and let's say that I want the name of this decision here to display the value of the variable Soviet power okay so we already have our decision here that's that creates the variable Soviet power and in the localization file what I'm going to do I'm going to copy the name of this decision just like this. If it's uh, a name of your focus, it works the same way as well. If it's an event, then it works the same way as well. There's really no difference. So if you're using this for either one of those, it will work. Okay, so we have the name of our decisions, colon, zero, space, quotation marks. Great. So now let's type something like Soviet, uh, Soviet power is and now I need to tell the game to access the variable and display it to me. So in order to do that, the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to open a square bracket. And then I'm going to type a question mark, just like this. This tells the game to check the value of a variable. Okay. And uh, in here, I'm going to type the name of the variable, Soviet power. And I'm going to close this bracket. I'm going to save it. And now let's see what we get here. So right now Soviet power is zero because the decision hasn't been executed yet. So Soviet power was not added. 
But if I were to execute it, we now see that Soviet power is 50. Excellent. So it actually checks the variable and tells us its value. Now, just like with how you use variables, you can actually access variables on different countries in here as well. So if I were to type France, Soviet power, and if it had that variable, then I would see the value of Soviet power for France. Now you can also use this method to access existing game variables, variables that actually come with the game, not variables that you create. So for example, I can actually show the party popularity in here as well. So let's say that I want to know what is the party popularity of the Democratic uh, Party in uh, Italy. Okay, so what I, I will type is, again, opening square bracket, question mark, and then first of all we'll type the tag for Italy, dot, and then party popularity at democratic, right? So that is the ideology of the party that I want to know what's their popularity. Democratic, or I think it's democracy, yeah, it's democratic probably. Okay, and if I were to save this and refresh it here, we see that, okay, it's not Soviet power, it's actually the party popularity of the Democratic Party in Italy, which is 22%. Now, in here it says 0 0.22. So as you can see, we now have a problem here because Italy's Democratic Party popularity is not 0 0.22, it's 22%. So this is a problem that you may encounter from time to time because the way that variables are displayed is not always the way that information is presented in other menus in the game. But there is a workaround to this and I'm going to show it to you now. So in order to fix this, what you can do, you'll need to type uh, this thing, which is called pipeline. Then you will need to type, then you will need to type the percentage symbol and zero just like this. So pipeline percentage zero. And if I were to save this and refresh it, you now see that it shows me 22%. So that is a workaround that you can use in order to present to present values the same way that they are shown uh, in other parts of the game, specifically for party popularity, very helpful. Another cool thing that I want to show you is how you can use variables to store information about other countries, or as it's explain in the Hearts Fire 4 wiki how you can use variables as event targets. So let's say that I want to create a variable that contains a country tag and then I want to do something with it. So for example, let's do something like this. We'll set a variable for uh, for us, for Germany, okay, and we'll call it country to uh, guarantee, okay. Yeah, maybe I'm misspelling this, whatever. And in here, instead of giving it a value, what I can actually do is to tell the game to store a country tag in here. Now, you might ask yourself, okay, but previously you said that variables can only contain uh, numbers, right? Well, uh, that is true, but when you actually execute this command, what it does is that it doesn't actually store the tag, the three letter tag, every country or every tag in the game has its own number. So it's actually storing that number and not the tag itself. So to do that, I will just need to type the tag of the country. So let's go ahead and do it for Mongolia. And after Mongolia, I'll need to type dot ID. And that means that this variable, its value will now be the tag of Mongolia. And let's see what we can actually do with that. Now I want to set this variable on me, Germany. And afterwards, what I want the Soviet Union to do is to guarantee Mongolia. So let's see how we can do that. That is the command for guaranteeing a country. But in here, instead of giving it a, a tag, what I'm going to type is var, sorry, var. Now, because I'm currently playing as Germany, then this variable will be saved in Germany. So I'm going to type the Germany tag. And instead of typing Mongolia, I'm going to type country to guarantee. And let's 
have the Soviet Union do that. And let's see how this works. So I'm going to first of all execute this decision. Now, because this is a variable command, then we don't really see anything in here. So you, one might assume that nothing happens, but we'll see that something definitely happens. So I'm going to click this one. And then you see here that when I'm executing this decision, the Soviet Union is now told to guarantee Mongolia. Because if I were to go here and check what's the value of country to guarantee for Germany, sorry, Germany, we see that it's Mongolia and Mongolia has its own number. And this is the number that is stored in the variable. Now, there's a lot of ways that you can use this. Uh, and honestly, I'm not creative enough to tell you exactly what are all of those ways, but I'm sure that you will find exciting ways to use this. This is something that can be used quite broadly in the game. All right, we've got two more to go. So in this one, I want us to take a look at temporary variables and what we can use them. Now, one of the most common use uses for temporary variables is to do all kinds of calculations. And the reason that we'll use temporary variables is because after we've done these calculations, I actually no longer need these variables. So instead of executing clear variable command, I can just tell the game, okay, create this variable, do the calculation, and then just get rid of it automatically. So let's take a look at an example and see how this works. Now I will be using the command to send equipment again, since it is actually quite useful for this example. So I'm just going to copy it. I'm just going to paste it in here. And um, let's just see what we have in here. So I'm going to keep this infantry equipment. Uh, with regards to the amount, what I want us to do here is to use a variable. So I'm going to set a temporary variable. This is the command for a temporary variable. And just like with a normal one, we need to give it a name. So let's say amount of uh, weapons. And we'll assign it the value of 100. I'm just going to copy this variable over here. So we're not going to be using this, we'll just be using this. And that means that we will be sending 100 guns to the Soviet Union. Let's just save this. But now let's say that I don't want to send 100. I want to take the 100 that I have and I want to multiply it by five. So we'll send 500. So I'm just going to use the multiply tempor temporary variable command. This is the command. And in here, what I'm going to do is to type the variable that I want us to, um, to multiply and I'll just give it five. Now, the, import the interesting thing here is that instead of five, you can actually designate another variable here, right? So there's a lot of mixing that you can do here, but we'll just stick to five. And that means that the game will take this 100, it will multiply it by five, and that means that the Soviet Union should get about 500 guns. Now, because the Soviet Union might already have 500 guns uh, or 500 weapons, uh, let's give it to a smaller country that might not have it. Uh, let's go for Cuba. And we'll actually make it something like 500. Okay, and we'll multiply it by five and we'll send it to Cuba. Now, what this means also is that after this whole thing is executed, I will not need to manually clear this variable, it will be gone. So let's just first of all try it and see if the variable is still there with the console command to get variable. So let's just execute this decision. As you can see, we'll be sending, uh, we'll be sending 2500 guns to Cuba or weapons to Cuba. Excellent. And now let's just see if the variable is still there or if it's gone. Okay, the variable is now zero because once the code has been executed, it's no longer there. So very useful to do all these kinds of small calculations where you don't want to set unnecessary variables. Okay, so we finally reached the end of the lesson. And what I want us to talk about are random variables. So in some situations, you may want to create a random variable that doesn't have a specific number that 
you came up with. You just want to tell the game to come up with a number on its own. For example, if I want to send another country a random amount of weapons, I can do that with random variables. So let's go ahead and see how I can do that. The first thing that we will need to do is to create a variable. We've already done that, so we'll be using this example that we've already used. I'm not going to multiply it, but I will be creating this variable and I will set it to zero, okay? Because I want the game to take this variable and randomize it. So in order to, to do that, I'm going to copy the command for randomizing variables. In this case, randomizing temporary variables. If you're randomizing a non-temporary variable, then you will need to just remove the temp from here. And first of all, we'll need to give it the name of the variable. As far as distribution goes, there are a number of distributions that you can use. I'll just be using uniform for the sake of this example. Now the minimum is going to be 200 and the maximum is going to be uh, five, let's say 1000. And what this tells the game is that it will create this variable. It will then randomize it to be between 200 and 1000. And then it will use the variable as the amount of equipment to send to Cuba. So let's go ahead and see how it looks here. Okay, so in here we see that it sends zero infantry equipment, but that is actually not true because the command here, the, random, the random, randomization of this variable was not executed yet. So once we do it, the amount of weapons will change between 200 and 1000. But let's go ahead and do this for a country that might not have all of these weapons already. Uh, let's find a small country like Bhutan and see how this works for them. So I think this is the tag for Bhutan, okay. So I'm going to tag switch to Bhutan. Let's just make sure how many weapons they have at the start of the game. Okay, they have 19. So let's see what happens when I'm executing this command as Germany. Okay, so I'm executing the command. Let's see how many weapons Bhutan will get. And I'm going to switch to Bhutan. Okay, and we see that they got around uh, 534 weapons. All right, and that is within the range that we gave it. So very nice, very nice. So this is how you can use random variables as well. All right, so uh, this was a very long lesson, uh, much longer than I actually originally uh, expected it to be. Um, hopefully most of this stuff works for you. Hopefully you've understood the power of variables. Please let me know in the comments if you have any issues and I'll do my best to help you. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video, lesson or tutorial on the Iron Workshop. Bye bye. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. The algorithm and me will be very happy. Here are more videos I make. If you like my stuff, consider subscribing to be notified when new content is available. The Iron Workshop lives and thrives thanks to the continued support of my Patreons. If you are willing and able, you can support me on Patreon for just one buck and get access to exclusive and early content. See you around.